It is interesting to now be informed by our informants, my informants, of the people who are trying to keep clear the pathway to do our people over. I am totally surprised at where this attack is coming from, but then yet I shouldn't be surprised. Um, but I've learned now that um, because they become aware of my association with Jilpi in the desert, and uh, the fact that only Jilpi of the highest order, senior lawmen, band together with their ba headbands and do not associate with um, other people because of the, the very nature of that band of men in that higher order because they are all of one mind and um, they all have equal power. The only differences we have in most cases is language. But the fact that we know the law under Aboriginal law and culture is quite revealing when you get to understand that despite language differences, we know our business. And it's very powerful. Now, the government realises after that conference in, at Uluru in the last three days, the last few days, that we forgot something. And they forgot something that is very serious. That is, where does Aboriginal law and culture fit into the scheme of things? Given that them lawmen senior lawmen, Red Dead Ban, Red Ogre Men, are the law of this land and they are the keepers and they are the adjudicators, they are the judges, they are the rulers of this land because they know that story, they know the Chukapa, they know the Womera, they know the dreaming and they know how it connects all over this country. And so when one mob miss their story then we can go and fix up that story place and put that proper story back in place for them and if they know their language they will teach them how to dance that story how to sing that story and then they can then put it back in their own language if they have those capacities and we identify where these things are because every site in every location in Australia as a symbol. And this is what white people have been doing for years and years, is destroying those symbols so that we can't connect back to them. But this is not possible to wipe out from our culture because too many of our old people have told stories to different families who can take you to places and explain where these things are on country even though ceremony may not have been happening for the last 120 years. It makes no difference. When we get there, we can read that country. Yeah? And that's very, very well known that that's possible. Now, all of a sudden, we have the referendum council realize that nobody wants to be in a referendum. Noel Pearson, tries to tell everybody that they've got to be in the Constitution before they can do a referendum. Lies, not true. That treaty does not have to have any constitutional change whatsoever to make it legal and to give it force in law. But of course the question is what sort of a treaty? Do we make an international treaty or do we make a domestic treaty? like the American Indians and the Canadian Indians and then be governed by those laws. I will do another story on this one 
separate. But let me concentrate on what's just happened. I have now been I have been informed that there is now a concerted effort to try and create a division with my association with senior lawmen in the desert. Um, one young, one woman has put up on Facebook that this half caste or whatever it is is trying to get involved with them full bloods. So there's this horrible, racist endeavours now popped its head from within our own Aboriginal communities, from within our, you know, our ranks. And this social network on Facebook is becoming very destructive. And so we need to ask, who's controlling this? Who's behind it? What's the purpose? Why would one cause division of that kind? And why would Aboriginal people themselves start talking on social media about full bloods and half cars and that um, this so-called half cars blackfellow should be getting there with them lawmen and what's he doing there and them old fellas he shouldn't be involved with full bloods. So this is a horrible trait that's starting to emerge. We can't, we must find the root of this. But on the other hand, the central concern, if we are to look at why is it that they're worried about this, it's because in the High Court in Marbo, they said that Aboriginal law and culture survived British sovereignty. And that law and culture of Aboriginal people, the First Nations of this nation, is not a construct of the British Empire and of the British common law, but that the common law now recognises it. So, any efforts to do any form of treaty negotiations cannot take place unless Aboriginal law and culture is the central foundation that will give any sort of legal authority to any treaty of any kind. And that's where the sovereignty is. The sovereignty is of the people and the soil. And we are the sovereigns of the soil and it is our law that gives us that sovereign ownership and entitlements. Now, for now, for Aboriginal people to be running around to separate me, or anybody else for that matter, who's engaged in law and culture at that highest level in our country and create that division, this is the lowest form of politics. This is the lowest form of attack, but we cannot allow that. Uh, we need our young ones to stand up now and start fighting back and clean this mess up because we can't afford to be causing a division based on our law and culture. This is wrong, it is immoral, completely unethical, and in our way, criminally wrong in our, under our law and our law as capital punishment and corporal punishment and so I will talk to men of the highest degree and we will talk about this and um, we will make it known to the Prime Minister of Australia and whoever else in the state government you mess with our law you mess with our leadership structure, then we will apply Aboriginal law proper way. And so, whatever they say on social media, just be mindful that there are a lot of people out there in the desert who don't want to join with the white man.